Hi! After watching the video, click the link in the description to download the program. I used to have gout. The attacks came just about every month, and they were simply awful. Now, I haven't had an attack for more than two years. I don't think I'll ever have another one ever again. At their worst, those attacks were disabling. I couldn't move. I couldn't go to work. I was literally unable to get up because even the slightest movement of the affected area was beyond unbearable. I couldn't sleep properly with bedclothes, which in cooler weather meant turning the heating up in the house. Not comfortable for my wife, not good for our energy bills. The causes of gout and the real causes of gout. After my first encounter with gout, my doctor gave me the standard explanation of its causes. He said that gout was caused by excess uric acid in the blood. Uric acid is a byproduct of the processing of certain foods. The uric acid comes from the liver as a waste product. It's sent to the kidneys from where it is supposed to be removed from the body. I had gout because, in a nutshell, gout is what you get when your body isn't expelling all its uric acid. The excess uric acid forms tiny spike-shaped crystals. Those crystals get into your bloodstream. From there, they find their way into your joints. And from time to time, the immune system attacks them. And when the immune system does that, the inflammation that results is experienced as a gout attack, also known as excruciating awful pain. If you suffer from gout, then I truly feel for you. I know what you're going through. It's been just over two years now since my final gout attack, but I still remember what it felt like. Anyway, that was the doctor's explanation of gout. So far, so simple. Gout only gets worse. Over the first year or so, my gout attacks went from one attack every one or two months, to monthly, and then occasionally, to every few weeks. I started with the standard meds, anti-inflammatories, steroid jabs, drugs to reduce the uric acid in my blood. Really, despite his best intentions, I think my doctor was simply trying things out. Treatments are offered as much in hope as in the expectation they'll do anything. But even when a drug did do some good, I knew I was just managing the condition. And I realized that for many gout sufferers, this was the case. They could swallow any number of pills, inject as much steroid as their bodies could handle, and avoid every suspect piece of food and drink. The underlying problem the actual cause of the gout was still there, creating all sorts of problems for the body to deal with. I followed the typical do's and don'ts. It's typical stuff. Exercise more, lose weight, eat a balanced diet, whatever that is. Eat less red meat. Don't smoke. I never have. Go a couple days a week without alcohol. And it made precisely no difference to my gout at all. Although, to be honest, if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have bothered with any of that asking the awkward questions. My natural curiosity prompted me to ask questions about this disease. If uric acid leads to gout, then why did I suddenly have too much uric acid in my blood? Well, it makes sense that either A, I was suddenly producing too much of it, or B, that my body simply was no longer removing it effectively. And it turns out that the answer is B. In fact, for 90% of gout sufferers, scientists say that it isn't overproduction of uric acid that is the problem. It's the underprocessing of it. In other words, something's going wrong with the body's ability to expel uric acid properly. So I was quite puzzled. Here's how I thought about it. There was a time when I hadn't even heard of gout, much less suffered from it. Then I had gout for just over three years. And then, two years ago, I experienced my last ever gout attack and never suffered another one. So, for a number of decades of my life, my body handled the uric acid effectively. Suddenly, it could no longer handle that acid properly, and so I found myself with gout. Fast forward after three years of gout, and once again, everything is fine. I'm gout-free. It doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to work this out. Remember, it's not that I'm producing too much uric acid that's the problem. It's that I'm no longer removing enough of it from my body. So at first, something in my body was working. It was getting rid of the uric acid. Then it stopped working, so I got gout. Then it started working again. The pain disappeared. There was no more flare-ups, and I was completely healthy once more. But there it is. I had gout because something had stopped working. And it's that something that had stopped working that most of our doctors are failing to address. 
If we find out what it is that stopped working and then started working again, then we found the key to ending gout forever. What I now know, but didn't know then. I haven't had even a whisper of gout now for over two years. And this is because, unlike most sufferers, I found a practitioner who tackled my gout from where it started, as opposed to just handling the symptoms. Once she'd done that, the problem of my body not processing uric acid properly was over. Bye-bye gout! I'm going to tell you about her approach now. But first, just be sure about this. Because if you suffer gout, this probably is your experience too. Once my doctor decided I had gout, he followed a pretty standard pattern of advice, medications, and treatments. Doctors all over America typically focus on three different approaches to the gout problem. First, since uric acid is the byproduct of the food we eat, they look at dietary restrictions on food, mostly on red meat and alcohol. The thinking is that if less uric acid is being produced in the first place, there's less for the body to deal with. That sounds a lot more sensible than it actually is. Second, gout patients try drugs that tackle the uric acid that's already made it to the bloodstream. The aim here is to help the body do its job of dissolving this excess. That meets with unpredictable results, but worse, it's dealing with the excess uric acid, not the reason why there's excess uric acid. Finally, other drugs are offered to tackle the pain and inflammation of gout as it arises. Again, this deals with what is happening, but not why it's happening. Still, on the surface, all this is perfectly understandable, but there's a serious problem here. Because for as long as the emphasis is on tackling gout at the point where the disease is already in some way in motion, we're simply not addressing what set it in motion in the first place. We feel like we're doing something useful, but we're tinkering at the edges of the problem. Which is why gout can and often does go on for years and years, yet it doesn't have to. Gout has dangerous risk factors. Things get a tiny bit worse. During that first visit, my doctor told me two other things, and I didn't like either of them. First, he pointed out that each gout attack makes another attack more likely. Once you've had a few attacks, that's about it. Get ready for gout as a regular thing. Some people that have had attacks of gout over a longer period can end up developing a more chronic or persistent form of gout. It's called chronic tophaceous gout, and the pain and loss of mobility is life-altering and disabling. Then he told me this, Gout is a risk factor for other conditions, some of them even more serious than the gout itself. In other words, because I had gout, it was more likely that I'd get at least one of those other conditions. And those other conditions included heart disease, particularly heart failure and strokes. He added that gout was also a risk factor for obesity, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, stress, and a number of unpleasant other conditions and there isn't a limit on which of those afflictions I could find myself suffering from. It might be that, in time, I contracted just one of them, but it could be two of them, or three. The possibility of my gout being a risk factor for me suffering all those at once did shock me quite a bit. I felt like I was just waiting for something else to go badly wrong with my health. One day, things really became too much. Just over two years ago, I had a gout attack that was so painful I was crying. I'm not one of life's criers. But I had to let it go on for a week and was in so much pain I honestly started questioning whether I wanted to live. I went back to my doctor. Turned out he was on vacation, so I saw one of his colleagues instead. She was a nice lady, thoughtful, she listened, and she could tell I was badly affected by this latest flare-up. We had a long conversation and she told me about a practitioner who specializes in dealing with gout. Seems this practitioner had a startling record with permanently ending gout for her clients. Not reducing it. Removing it. That practitioner's approach was verified both in theory, in experiment, and in real life. She based it on three decades of science coming from leading researchers in the U.S. and Europe. The researchers' successes in tackling a range of health conditions are mounting up, and for some years now, the medical community has been rethinking some of their most fundamental ideas about how the body works. From that research, she had created her gout strategy that is now having such profound results for gout sufferers. My doctor admitted it wasn't her area of expertise, so she gave me the name of that alternative health practitioner she'd mentioned. 
and that's when I first heard of Shelley Manning. And if it's not too dramatic a statement to make, what I learned from Shelley changed my life. The end of gout. Shelley Manning is an accomplished natural health researcher and writer. She began her work on natural health remedies after suffering years of very painful arthritis. She discovered that where modern medicine was consistently failing to relieve a person of their suffering, it was often because they didn't really know what was causing the condition in the first place. They tackled what they could see, but the rest was a mystery. Shelley's research took in dozens of peer-reviewed studies from universities across the world, plus personal testimonies from hundreds of arthritis sufferers. She eventually became completely free of arthritis, which was not only an immense relief to her, but also it drove her to share her discoveries with others so that they too would never suffer such horrible ongoing pain. Both her arthritis and her gout remedies are hugely successful today, and many people have Shelley to thank for their pain-free lives. She laid out some simple gout truths that made perfect sense to me. First, she pointed out that doctors always tell you to eat healthily because, whether you're ill or healthy, it's generally sound advice. What's more, if you go from eating and drinking a lot of junk to eating lots of good quality food, then your overall health is bound to improve a little. But this is where I learned a startling insight from Shelley. You can eat correctly, as your doctors tell you to, but you can also eat correctly specifically for gout, which isn't the same thing because you can eat food that specifically tackles gout head-on. Food that removes the source of gout. That's something that stopped working that we learned about earlier. And that's a whole different ball game. This ain't theory. How this insight came about is fascinating. Scientists have long known food is a medicine. But what's been happening since the 1980s is that scientists have steadily worked out why it's a medicine. Shelley Manning understands the science of this inside out, which she told me was jaw-dropping. But let me give you the short version, and we'll start with something really weird, your gut. No, your gut's not weird, not in itself, but check this out. You have, it is estimated, something like 75 trillion bacteria in your gut. There are more bacteria in the gut than cells in the entire human body, and you've had them all your life. The bacteria in our gut make up what is called our microbiome. The microbiome refers to all the bacteria that live with us in our guts. It's the community of bacteria, plus other microorganisms, that are permanently with us. There's nothing special or unusual about the human microbiome. In fact, plenty of mammals and some insects also have microbiomes. They're a fact of life. We humans have had our gut microbiome since the dawn of humanity. We need it. Bacteria is not always what you think it is. But, of course, when we hear the word bacteria, we imagine something awful. Disease, contagion, illness, death. Because mostly we associate bacteria with being very ill. There's something to fight off the moment we get them. We buy products from our supermarket that boast how quickly and effectively they kill bacteria. But bacteria are just single-celled organisms that can be found just about anywhere. Some are dangerous. Some are highly beneficial. It depends which bacteria they are, and it depends on where they are. Those that exist within us, within our gut microbiome, are largely beneficial to us. In fact, in a healthy human being, some 95% of them are responsible for a number of vital body processes that either keep us healthy or keep us alive. Yes, they're that important. We are, in fact, extraordinarily dependent on the health of our microbiome. So much about us on the surface, our health, our moods, our body weight, reflects what's going on in the gut. Incredibly, scientists are now recognizing that the microbiome, our gut bacteria, is so vital to our general health that some think of it as an organ in its own right. They regard it as important to our existence as the kidneys or the heart or the lungs. In fact, scientists are able to transplant the gut bacteria from a healthy person into the gut of a diseased patient in order to cure disease. Known as fecal microbiota transplants, these procedures repopulate people's unhealthy gut microbiome with healthy, thriving bacteria. Bacteria transplants. Who'd have thought it? But scientists state that's how vital it is to keep your gut in its best shape possible. 
we need to maintain a health ratio of 95% friendly, life-enhancing bacteria, with 5% being whatever else is there. When that ratio goes out of balance, humans become vulnerable to infection, poisoning, malnourishment, and a whole range of degenerative and lifestyle disorders. It's really hard to overstate how important our gut health is to us. Our gut health is our health. A healthy microbiome, a healthy gut, is our health in many respects. Obesity is now thought of as a gut disease. Unhealthy bacteria get the upper hand in your gut and cause the kind of food cravings that most of us find so hard to resist. And gut health also affects mental health, moods basically. Scientists now believe that persistently feeling low for no apparent reason may have a bacterial explanation. So let's be absolutely clear about this. Your gut bacteria aren't just add-ons to your health, they are your health. In the same way that a faulty liver will cause you big problems, just as a weak heart will require expert attention in order to keep you alive, like lungs that don't function properly, or kidneys that are diseased, or a lymph system that isn't working effectively. Your gut health is vital to your overall health because your gut bacteria do things that your body itself can't do. To be healthy, we must make sure that we encourage beneficial, healthy bacteria to flourish, while at the same time, we discourage less beneficial or harmful bacteria from doing the same. If we don't do this, then there are consequences, and gout is one of those consequences. And that's how I got the condition myself. Poor gut health gave me gout. It's done the same to you, but good gut health undid all that damage, making gout nothing more than a distant memory and it can do the same for you. You really can do something about your condition now. The key to a healthy gut and a healthy body. What I learned from Shelley Manning is that if you practice healthy eating, then you may affect your gut health for the better, even if that wasn't your intention. In other words, by eating better foods, you may very well accidentally improve things a little. Unfortunately, we might also accidentally make things a little worse for our gut bacteria. Some healthy food actually isn't so healthy for our guts. If we want to tackle gout once and for all, we have to be clear about what helps us and what hurts us. So what Shelley does is remove the accident aspect of healthy eating. She focuses hard on what makes our gut bacteria healthier and happier. And she ensures that we don't do ourselves any harm by ingesting too much of what harms that bacteria. And this approach works. I finally won the struggle against gout because, for the first time, I could make conscious choices about eating for gut health. Here was something I could do that would directly tackle that nasty disease head on. Shelley's deliberate gout-focused strategy addressed my gout at its actual source. My microbiome flourished, and when it did, I did too, which changed my life forever. The link between your gut health and your gout. Scientists are now clear that gut health determines whether or not you have gout. How? By comparing the microbiome profiles, the bacteria profiles, of people who have gout with the microbiome profiles of people who do not have gout. There is a clear difference. And the differences in the microbiome between gout patients and healthy people are predictable and consistent, which means that we can know whether a person has gout just by looking at their microbiome. Put plainly and simply, gout is a disease of the gut. So why do you have gout whereas I don't? It's because I have one thing you don't have. All the right bacteria thriving in my gut. And specifically, that bacteria is doing one thing for me that it's not doing for you. It's helping my kidneys process the excess uric acid that causes gout in the first place. Because that bacteria is converting up to one-third of that excess uric acid into something called Allantoin, a substance that dissolves in water, which means up to a third of my body's uric acid can be simply got rid of in urine. So, put crudely, I simply pee it out. No need for my kidneys to process it all. My gut bacteria has it covered. This is the incredible power of your gut microbiome. Human bodies can't turn uric acid into allantoin, but our friendly gut bacteria can. And when it does that for me, it's clearing up the excess uric acid in my bloodstream, meaning my kidneys don't have to. So those pin-like uric acid crystals don't form, which means they don't find themselves lodged in my joints, 
meaning there's nothing for my immune system to attack, so nothing to cause excruciating, disabling pain. My gut will have trillions of bacteria in it whether I want it to or not. So will yours. But I can choose whether that bacteria is the life-enhancing bacteria that keeps me happy, healthy, and alive, or the dangerous, disease-giving stuff. I chose the good stuff. So I have plentiful, good, friendly, life-enhancing gut bacteria working for me, doing things for me that the human body simply cannot do for itself. And when I made that choice, my gout didn't stand a chance. Bacteria is a lifesaver. One last thing. You recall that my doctor told me gout was a risk factor for type 2 diabetes, obesity, kidney disease, heart disease, irritable bowel disease, and so on. If you have gout, then it's very likely that you'll go on to develop one or more of the others. The medical profession has known about the link between these diseases for decades. They now know why there's this link. They found that the bacteria profile in a person with one of these diseases is recognizable and predictable. In other words, when doctors examine the person's gut bacteria, they already know what to expect, because that gut profile that ratio of healthy bacteria to unhealthy bacteria is the origin of that condition. It's what's causing it. Of course, the bacteria profile for each disease will vary. But once your gut health is going downhill, it can be one-way traffic, and the bad effects spread throughout the microbiome. So defeating gout isn't, in fact, just defeating gout. It's also minimizing your exposure to all those other unpleasant and sometimes fatal diseases and at the same time, helping you achieve optimum health at all levels, physical, appearance, and moods. Seen this way, why would anyone not address their gut health? The end of gout. I acquired Shelly Manning's gout program just over two years ago. It's called the end of gout, and it did for me exactly what it says on the cover, because I no longer suffer those excruciating gout attacks, and I don't have to cancel plans because a flare-up has left me unable to function properly. I'm never going to experience any of that ever again. And it's because I now know how to ensure the health of my friendly gut bacteria and how to not feed the unfriendly ones. I'm so glad I made the decision to tackle gout myself. Shelley's program gave me everything I needed to know about how and why her approach works so fantastically well. She goes into some detail about your gut, its bacteria, and why scientists now realize that healing the gut heals the body. However, you can skip all that if you want to. You can simply go straight to the program itself and start getting healthy again. However you do it, you'll be very happy that you did. The End of Gout Quick Start Plan Shelley Manning's The End of Gout is not only a fascinating read, it's also refreshingly practical. Shelley gives you two simple quick starts. Eat more of these, eat fewer of these. This simple adjustment can correct years of gout-causing errors in your eating. And you can start on this straight away, within minutes of receiving the program. A simple plan. The next step is to follow Shelley's 7-day plan. It tightens up the quick start advice and turns it into a solid follow-along program. The 7-day plan was the real clincher for me. I'm a pretty average cook. I'm competent, but not at all skilled or adventurous. Turns out, I didn't need to be. The plan takes away all the thinking and gives me, for the first week, something I can simply copy. After the first seven days, I used Shelley's advice to adapt the plan according to my own tastes. Which was pretty easy. The plan is full of options, so you can try different foods and see what you like best. It's all food you can buy in your supermarket, and it includes lots of nice stuff. The chocolate and strawberries desserts were real winners in my house. This isn't a weight loss plan, but... This isn't a weight loss plan, so there isn't any calorie counting or portion control. I was never hungry. As a side note, I actually have now lost weight because of the plan. But that's more to do with the fact that a healthy gut means fewer or no food cravings. Remember, it's bad bacteria that craves the food, not you. When they're gone, they take their cravings with them. I did have a gout flare-up about 10 days after starting the program. It was noticeably milder than others. It was painful, but lasted about 5 days from beginning to end, which is significantly shorter than what I'm used to. However, what I didn't know at that time was this. That attack was the last one I would ever have. 
My gout didn't announce that it had thrown in the towel. It just stopped. I had that last attack and never had another one. I am gout free for life. Now it's your turn. There's now thousands of us who no longer suffer gout because we tackled it at its cause instead of just tinkering with the symptoms. I'm one of them. Remember, I got gout for the same reasons you have it now. An unhealthy gut microbiome meant that bacteria that should have been removing a third of my body's uric acid simply wasn't. That bacteria had diminished to the point that my kidneys were trying to deal with the acid on their own, and they couldn't cope, nor can yours. It wasn't that I was suddenly producing too much uric acid. It's that my gut was no longer able to help my kidneys remove it from my body. By following Shelley Manning's program, I ate myself back to health. And the transformation from gout to no gout almost felt like magic. You can possibly imagine it yourself, what it would be like to simply never have any gout ever again. Take my word for it, it's wonderful. No flare-ups, no pain, no being laid up in bed for days waiting for the pain to subside. No wondering if some future event will be messed up because I'm laid up in agony with another attack. Just as pleasing as that, I've also dramatically reduced my risks of suffering diabetes, kidney failure, heart disease, and some cancers. Shelley's program lays it all out for us. Click the link in the description to download the program.